uh, of course she is very well known in our congregation for her wonderful vaishnava qualities melodious kirtans and of course for her, her bhakti her devotion to the supreme lord and she and rahul prabhu are the pillar of support for our temple so she is going to speak from bhagavad gita today so with that let us welcome paramanjir mata ji by loudly chanting hare krishna ma mantra one time hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare thank you hare krishna hare krishna we'll start with uh, jay radha madhava jay radha madhava jay kunj bihari jay radha madhava jay kunj bihari jay gopi jana everyone bear with me i'm going to start sharing my screen <clears throat> om agyana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militanyena tasmay shri gurave namaha श्री चैतन्य मनो स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री युतापदकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवाी रूप सागर जात सह गारगुनाथ वितम तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पिजन सहित श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गना ललिता श्री विशाखान विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु भय वच 
पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे Thank you, everyone. I know this week was busy with uh, Nitin and Pradeshi in the middle of the week, and uh, we're back to a Sunday program. Uh, so thank you for uh, all of you for joining. Um, before I start our uh, verse for today, it is chapter four, verse twenty-four. Uh, I want to also uh, share with all of you that I am a little underprepared for today's class, so bear with me. uh been dealing with a few uh you know um, health issues so i'm going to ask satisar prabhu to jump in for any clarifications or uh, answer any questions so bear with me on that <clears throat> om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Chapter four, verse twenty-four. Brahmaarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmagna Brahmana Hutam Brahmai Vate Na Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina. We'll do the verse one more time. Brahmaarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmagna Brahmana Hutam. माताजी थैंक यू समन्विता एनीवन एल्स ब्रह्मार्पणम ब्रह्म हवीर ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्मण तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सामक यू प्रभुजी सो ब्रह्म वील रीड दर्ड बाय वर्ड ट्रांसलेशन ब्रह्म स्पिरिचुअल इन नेचर अर्पणम कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन और ऑफरिंग ब्रह्म द सुप्रीम हवि बटर ब्रह्म स्पिरिचुअल agnav the fire of consummation brahmana by the spirit soul hutam offered brahma spiritual kingdom eva certainly tena by him gantavyam to be reached brahma spiritual karma activities samadhina by complete absorption so the translation of this verse is a person who is fully absorbed in krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature so this is again krishna after karma yoga we move on to the transcendental knowledge and in the transcendental knowledge krishna starts this chapter by sharing with arjuna how the uh, um, how this knowledge was given by him 
you know, millions and millions of years ago. And it has been coming to us in disciplic succession. But because the disciplic succession, you know, breaks, Krishna has to come back and give us this knowledge. So Krishna is saying here, he's assuring us that a person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution. So if you're fully absorbed in something, you are going to be giving it your 100% full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. So when we are in that state and the word samadhina is very important, that complete absorption in Krishna is very important because based on our uh, investment and you know, complete surrender and full uh, involvement and you know, full, when we give ourselves in full to something, that is when we are actually transcending and that's why this is transcendental knowledge. We are transcending the material knowledge, the material platform. And when we transcend that, then we are sure to attain the spiritual kingdom. <clears throat> We're going to go through uh, the purport. And what I've done in the purport is I've split it into uh, smaller uh, consumable uh, pieces so that you know we focus on every uh, few sentences and uh, reflect on that. So Srila Prabhupada has written in the purport, how activities in Krishna consciousness can lead one uh, ultimately to the spiritual goal is described here. So this is this, uh, at the end of this, at the end of this verse, we will see that we are talking about the perfect cure, okay? <clears throat> because we are all trapped by the material energy. So Srila Prabhupada is saying how activities in Krishna consciousness can lead one ultimately to the spiritual goal is described here. There are various activities in Krishna consciousness and all of them will be described in, uh, in chapter four, all of them are described. But for the present verse, just the principle of Krishna consciousness is described. Uh, what's important here is Srila Prabhupada is trying to uh, explain this verse to us and say that the spiritual goal, we often ask this question and we ask this to so many of our gurus that how do I know I'm making spiritual progress? We ask this question all the time. How do I know all this is going to, you know, is moving me forward? This verse is going to tell us more about that. A conditioned soul entangled in material contamination is sure to act in the material atmosphere, and yet he has to get out of such an environment. So we are trapped in the material world. So we are obviously impacted by this material atmosphere, but we also know that we have to get out of this. And to get out of this, the process by which the conditioned soul can get out of the material atmosphere is Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> we are also fortunate that we have uh, come in contact with, you know, uh, the Guru Parampara with ISKCON to be able to at least start our journey towards the spiritual goal. <clears throat> An example Srila Prabhupada gives is, a patient who is suffering from a disorder of the bowels due to overindulgence in milk products is cured by another milk product, namely curd or yogurt, which we, you know, commonly refer here. And we all know, you know, if you're going to take a lot of milk products, your, your body cannot digest excessive milk products. But when you have stomach ailments, the yogurt or curd is what actually helps you. So it is a, a, a different form of the same product. The materially absorbed conditioned soul can be cured by Krishna consciousness as set forth here in the Gita. This process is generally known as yagya or activities, sacrifices, simply meant for satisfaction of Vishnu or Krishna. The more the activities of the material world are performed in Krishna consciousness or for Vishnu only, the more the atmosphere becomes spiritualized by complete absorption. 
So this last paragraph here, or the last bullet here, reminds us that yes, we are performing material activities because when we are in the material world, you are performing material activities, right? But when we perform those activities in Krishna consciousness, and an example of that is, you know, yes, you, you are doing work eight hours a day at your desk, but you start your day by worshiping Krishna. Many of us keep a picture of Krishna at our desk, okay? Uh, pray to the Lord. Thank the Lord when something good happens and make Krishna the center of everything that we are doing, that we are receiving and that we are giving. So those activities are simply meant for satisfaction of Vishnu or Krishna. And the more our atmosphere becomes spiritualized, the more we start moving towards our spiritual goal. The word Brahma, Brahman, means spiritual. The Lord is spiritual and his rays and the rays of his transcendental body are called Brahma Jyotir, his spiritual effulgence. Everything that exists is situated in that Brahma Jyotir, but when that Jyoti is covered by illusion, maya, or sense gratification, it is called material. The material veil can be removed at once by Krishna consciousness. Thus the offering for the sake of Krishna consciousness, the consuming agent of such an offering or contribution, the process of consumption, the contributor and the result are all combined together. It's the Brahman or the absolute truth. So when we do something for the sake of Krishna, everything, the offering, the process of consumption, the contribution, the result, they all become Brahman, spiritual in nature or absolute truth. The absolute truth covered by Maya is called matter. Matter dovetailed for the cause of the absolute truth regains its spiritual quality. Krishna consciousness is the process of converting the illusory consciousness into Brahman or the Supreme. This last sentence is very important. So what is Krishna consciousness? A lot of people may ask you this question, what is Krishna consciousness? And it is really the process of converting our illusory consciousness because we, we are in an illusion. And like it is said, when, when, the, when Krishna's Brahma Jyoti is covered by Maya, then it is all material. It's the process of uncovering that illusion, okay? And connecting back with the Supreme. So the purport continues, and this is all in uh, the uh, Bhagavad Gita. When the mind is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, it is sent to, said to be in Samadhi or trance. Trance, transcendental. So we have to transcend go beyond the modes of nature. And when we are fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, it is said to be Samadhi. Samadhi is not necessarily what we envision as somebody sitting on a mountain uh, in a posture and you know uh, meditating. We can be fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness even while doing our material activities. As long as we offer everything to Krishna, the beginning, the middle, the end. <clears throat> Anything done in such transcendental consciousness is called yagya or sacrifice for the absolute. In that condition of spiritual consciousness, the contributor, the contribution, the consumption, the performer or leader of the performance and the result or the ultimate gain Everything becomes one in the absolute, the supreme Brahman. That is the method of Krishna consciousness. So many uh, years ago, I had a friend who, uh, you know, they are disciples of uh, Bhakti Charaswami Maharaj. And when Bhakti Charaswami Maharaj was building the temple in Ujjain, they took a second mortgage on their house to be able to... Uh, you know, give a loan to their Guru Maharaj to build the temple. This is not, a, this is not ordinary for anybody to do. 
<clears throat> I don't know, I don't know many people who can do this. And I asked her, I said, wow, that is amazing. You took a second mortgage on your house. <clears throat> so um, over the years, you know, they've been a source of inspiration to uh, all of us. Uh, and one thing I remember she always said is, uh, she said, Krishna doesn't see what you give. Krishna sees what you keep. And that uh, statement, you know, touched me so much because we are always thinking that should I give $100 or $150? And again, there is no, you know, imposition, but when Krishna has said in the Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam, he has, it's basically what you call the lowest common denominator that for anybody, anybody can practice Krishna consciousness. But if we are eating puri, halwa, chole, and we offer to Krishna water and uh, a leaf, then there is an imbalance. Then we are not doing our activities in complete Krishna consciousness. So I think the key here is always we have to remember that uh, to be fully absorbed, we have to transcend, okay? And it's interdependent. So you can say that, you know, transcendence comes by being fully absorbed. That is correct. But to get to that stage, we have to get to the understanding that everything belongs to Krishna. And we are only borrowing it or, you know, receiving our little bit. Now, when we come through that spiritual consciousness, this last bullet, the contributor, the contribution, the consumption, the performer, okay, or the leader of the performance and the ultimate gain, everything becomes absolute. <clears throat> My mother will always say, you know, when you get a new job, when you get a new, when you get a, a promotion, whatever you get, make sure you make that first offering to the Lord. Because by making that first offering to the Lord, whatever is, you know, your capacity to do that, everybody has a different capacity. Do it according to your capacity, but do it with your full consciousness that Krishna, it all belongs to you. And I'm offering this to you now. <clears throat> so uh, an analogy that I came across uh, with in this verse is, when the waves of the ocean dash against each other, nothing new happens because the waves are nothing but the ocean. And by their act of dashing against each other, the ocean rises over itself and it becomes one with the ocean, correct? Similarly, when yagya is performed by a sage for whom there is no plurality of the world, Brahman, the truth is the performer, offering <clears throat> Brahman, the material world to the sacred fire, which is nothing but Brahman invoking Brahman only. So that is an analogy to this verse. In previous verse, it is stated that performing actions for the sake of sacrifice, yagya alone melts away all actions. And in this verse, it is stated that by attaining true knowledge, the seeker's whole life becomes an act of yagya. So your whole life, when you're fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, becomes a yagya, sacrifice, offering to Vishnu, Krishna. <clears throat> in which the process of offering, the objects offered, the fire, the doer of the sacrifice, the work itself, and the goal are all Brahman spiritual in nature, then there is no materiality left. <clears throat> so a little bit before we, uh, in the next few slides, I'll cover, uh, you know, uh, Srila Prabhupada's uh, lectures, uh, trans, uh, transcripts from Srila Prabhupada's lectures on this verse and this chapter. But before getting into that, <clears throat> I wanted to cover a little bit about chapter four, transcendental knowledge. So spiritual knowledge is known as Shruti, that which is heard. In the previous ages, people would hear such knowledge, remember it, assimilate it, and perfectly communicated to the next person without adulteration. Chapter four is entitled Transcendental Knowledge for it is the knowledge which outlines how one can establish the divine connection with God. The Vedas encourage us to see God 
through our ears rather than our eyes. <clears throat> In the nine processes of bhakti, <clears throat> the first one is shravanam. Okay, hearing. Because we can see God through our ears. And hearing comes from hearing from the various gurus and acharyas. So it has to be a pure form of hearing. Okay. And <clears throat> another, uh, another uh, acronym of ears that I read when I was studying this verse was ears means E for eternal education. Okay, so you really want to go to the eternal education, not a uh, um, concocted. Uh, there are so many versions of the Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> and each, you know, it, it's a business in itself. Okay, so you really want to go to the authorized source. A is accurate understanding, R is removing reactions, and S is sacrifice. So while ears has its own meaning, <clears throat> ears is also in terms of an acronym described for how we can study and understand the different verses <clears throat> in chapter four. <clears throat> so we're going to jump to uh, Srila Prabhupada's lectures because it will be a miss not to capture, uh, you know, the teachings of our uh, founder and uh, acharyas. And uh, there's nothing I would say that is more uh, clear than information in Srila Prabhupada's lectures. <clears throat> so on this verse, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada says that Krishna says, if five things are transformed into Krishna consciousness or Brahman realization, then the result will be that the man who is performing that sacrifice is sure to attain his spiritual salvation and go back to Godhead. And that's exactly what we read in the translation of this verse, <clears throat> that by doing these spiritual activities, we are sure to go back, Krishna said, to this, to the spiritual world. Furthermore, Prabhupada says, now Brahmarpanam, sacrifice. Sacrifice for whom? Okay, for the Brahman. And Krishna is the supreme Brahman. So nobody is higher than Krishna. Supreme Brahman. In terms of Brahman here can be referred to as <clears throat> spiritual. So Krishna is the supreme. Therefore, sacrifice for Krishna is Brahmarpanam. That means you're offering to Krishna. Means sacrifice for the Brahman, the supreme Brahman. Because Krishna is described in the 10th chapter as Param Brahman, the Supreme Brahman, Brahman means we are also Brahman because we are also fragments of Krishna, right? <clears throat> because we are all fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Being, Krishna, therefore we are also Brahman. Just like particles of gold are also gold, similarly, we are fragmental portions of Krishna. So eternally, we are all spiritual, but we, because we are a fragment of Krishna, <clears throat> so we have the same, in terms of qualitativeness, there are similarities, but quantitatively, we are really tiny particles, okay? And when Krishna is described as Param Brahman, he's the Supreme Brahman. While we are all spiritual, but, the Supreme Brahman, and that is why we offer, we do Brahmarpanam to the Supreme Brahman. Okay. Prabhupada continues. The spiritual conception is that there are any number of fragments of the whole can be taken from the whole spirit, but still the sp spirit whole is as it is. So even though we are all fragments from Krishna, Krishna didn't become smaller by all of us being fragments. Yes, in the material terms, one minus one is zero, correct? But in the spiritual realm, one minus one is one. <clears throat> Krishna does not become less by all of us being fragments of Krishna. So normally you take away something <clears throat> from a whole, it becomes less. <clears throat> but that's only in the material terms. In the spiritual terms, 
it is all absolute it is there's no duality so it is all absolute so even though we are fragments krishna doesn't become less he is still the supreme brahman so these fragments the fragments of the supreme brahman krishna we are and with that consciousness we have to sacrifice we have to offer that krishna ultimately we are all like and i know in many verses they say we are part and parcel we are fragments of krishna so how do we now move from being fragments to building that connection because we have lost that connection which is why we are here furthermore brahmarpanam brahmahavir and the thing which we are sacrificing we have to understand that that belongs to the supreme brahman so that's exactly what i was talking a few minutes ago that whatever we offer to krishna it doesn't belong to us it belongs to krishna in hindi <clears throat> uh, for many of you you must have heard uh, you must you know i think anybody from india has uh, heard the aarti om jay jagadish hare and the last verse says tera tujhko arpan kya lage mera which means <clears throat> for those of you who uh, need a translation from hindi that means whatever i am offering actually belongs to you it doesn't belong to me but even then i'm hesitating to offer so we're requesting krishna to help us rise above that level that we get the understanding it is easy to read and to say yes i know that whatever i offer actually belongs to krishna and i can speak that you know starting with myself also but it is a difficult concept to apply because we are always thinking of what we can do for ourselves and uh, again it's it's again lifetimes of um, uh, this illusion that we have been in so it's again going to be a process by which we can get out of this illusion so the intent is not for us to feel that oh my god i'm going to be depressed now that i know i'm not doing it the intent is that we start our journey we start this realization and start making progress as shri prabhupad said in krishna consciousness you're either moving forward or you're moving backward there's no staying stagnant so little by little it takes years lifetimes for us to you know uh, uh, make that journey so but our duty in this human form of birth is to make sure we are making progress we're making deliberate progress in the right direction uh again continuing on shri prabhupad's lectures brahmarpanam brahmahavir brahmagna so the and the fire which is on the altar that is to be understood as the energy of the supreme brahman and the brahmana hutam the person who is offering the sacrifice he is also part and parcel of the supreme brahman in this way if we offer sacrifice then brahma eva tena gantavyam the person who is offering the sacrifice is sure to attain spiritual salvation so this is basically saying we are all spiritual and for us to make that fulfill that spiritual goal and to you know be sure to go back to krishna this is the formula it is the cure it's called the perfect cure this is brahma karma samadhina and the performance is just according to the vedic injunction so in this way if we execute the duties of our living condition so it is our duty in the human form of life it is our duty to perform krishna consciousness so if we execute the duties of our living condition then the result will be that at the end we shall attain we shall be attaining brahman and the whole process is called krishna consciousness 
I have to say it, it took me a while to, <clears throat> you know, get some verses I've understood more easily than others. This verse, I had to talk to my father also and get his uh, input on it. It took me a while to understand how everything is connected and how this is now, you know, this verse is actually the cure of our illusion. This is telling us what is the cure for our illusion. <clears throat> so I think for me personally, because the word Brahma was in so many places, it took me a while to understand the different uh, translations of how Brahm, Brahmarpanam is different from Brahmagno. And once reading it over and over again, got me to the understanding that ultimately it is all absolute. And the process of uh, our spiritual absorption, okay, will get us to the other end of this ocean. At the present moment, we have to perform sacrifices by chanting Hari Kirtana, the glorification of Krishna. This is Yajna. <clears throat> so this is very important. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada has made it very clear that in this age of Kali, we are not expecting to do uh, <clears throat> fire sacrifices. The sacrifice or Yajna for this age of Kali is Hari Kirtana. And that is why chanting and hearing are the most important for this age. Of course, chanting, we know while we do, when we do Hari Kirtan, that is, you know, glorifying the Lord, but chanting the Maha Mantra, which Lord, Prabhupada has, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us is extremely important and that is Yajna. So we all have different levels of uh, attention when we are chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <clears throat> and one of the 10 offenses in uh, the um, chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is being inattentive while chanting. <clears throat> so that is one of the 10 offenses. And there are many others, and I'm not going to go through that. I know Jay Subhadra Mataji had once covered all the 10 offenses. <clears throat> so basically for that full absorption if we want to uh, measure our full absorption, because people often ask, how do I know I'm making progress? Those 10 offenses that are given, we should really use that as the metric for us to identify if we are making progress. If, you, if we are able to say, yes, I'm not, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do this of those 10 offenses, <clears throat> then we know, you know, what we have covered and how much ground we have to cover. But important pieces in this age of Kali, the yajna, the process of sacrifice and offering to Krishna is chanting. This sacrifice of Sankirtan yajna is nothing manufactured. It is recommended <clears throat> in Vedic literature and it was performed by Lord Chaitanya. A um, few days ago when Guru Maharaj talked about uh, glories of Nityanand Prabhu, it was all around how Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were freely distributing, freely distributing the most valuable thing that anybody can receive in human life, which is the Mahamantra. So it is not manufactured. People may say, I don't believe in this maha mantra. I believe in a different maha mantra. That's, you know, again, there's a lot of hearsay around it. But Lord Chaitanya came 500 years ago, which was not a very long time ago. And this knowledge has been transferred to us from, you know, within these 500 years that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the ultimate yajna for Kali Yuga. So there is nothing unauthorized. It is completely authorized. Srila Prabhupada is saying, so I shall request all friends and audience here to take up this matter very seriously and just try to execute it, although there are some impediments. So any good thing you do 
there will be so many impediments but we have to execute our mission durlabha manava janama satsange bhakti vinod thakur has said that because this human form of life and i remember as a when i was in my 20s <clears throat> my grandmother used to say that after 84 lakh uh, or 8 million 400000 species we get this human birth at that age you know unlike many of the kids today who are so fortunate to have this association early on when i used to listen to that i would say how is that even possible i see so many humans around me so how can human life be rare yes it is very rare and you know i i know that most people who have not uh, read the scriptures or not come in association with devotees do not understand how precious and how rare human birth is because you're looking at 7.2 billion people on earth and you're like how is that rare well we are, what we are not considering is all the other species that are there on earth so it's very important to understand that we have to execute our mission for this human life there will be impediments but unless we make progress in this life we don't know if we are even going to get a human birth next life to continue this journey or if we will fall down from this human birth and then once you fall down you go through these 8 million 400000 species to come back to human birth that is going to be very painful and the same friend of mine who had told me uh, krishna doesn't see what you give krishna sees what you keep she had told me that you know hu- human birth is so painful i mean going through school and college and jobs and you know birth death disease old age do i really want to do this again you know you ask an average person they'll say i'm very happy i want to be in this prison but we are very fortunate that we have come in contact with somebody as prabhu pad said somehow or other i have come in contact with someone who can now share with me what is the real purpose of life and the real purpose of human birth is to transcend to get fully absorbed and to return to the spiritual world you know every morning when i uh, i read the bhagavad gita our dog will come and sit next to me she cannot understand anything okay but i am so confident that if there's anybody who's getting the maximum benefit of me reading bhagavad gita it is her because it is making an imprint on her soul and that imprint on the soul which we also had in some life which is why this lifetime we are practicing that imprint on the soul is so important because the soul has a memory and the way the you you know you imprint the soul with whatever that is what you carry to your next life why do they say that you know when a mother is pregnant she should be you know reading good uh not listening to uh offensive or being involved in offensive activities uh be doing you know pious activities read the bhagavad gita listen to the holy chants why do they say that that fetus really cannot understand everything but it is making an imprint on their soul through the ears so that is why we see god through our ears Shri Prabhupada continues if we perform this sacrifice nicely according to the rules recommended by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we are sure to get salvation uh, i've heard from Nirant Prabhu that whenever Shri Prabhupada used to give initiations he would say chant 16 rounds and follow the four regulative principles and i assure you you will go back to godhead in this lifetime so i've heard and then the prabhu is a disciple of chila prabhupad so i know we're getting this first hand knowledge and first hand information for those of us who have not had the good fortune to associate with chila prabhupad directly and he's saying this again 
if we perform this sacrifice, what is the sacrifice for this age? Chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Sankirtan Yagya. According to the rules recommended by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are sure to get salvation. Nishchitam. Nishchitam means sure. So let us perform this sacrifice with patience and perseverance, with steadiness, and then surely we shall achieve the desired result, spiritual salvation, which is that it is stated, Brahmaivatena gantavyam. The whole thing is meant for us to go back home, go back to Godhead. That is the whole thing. This is not our home. Neither is it our place. We come here as a foreigner or a visitor. So when you go to another country on a tourist visa, okay, you don't end up staying there. You come back, right, to your uh, home country. Uh, an example that I had heard many years ago in a lecture is that you check into a hotel. You don't start decorating that hotel room and saying, oh, I'm going to put my pictures here. Oh, I'm going to, you know, do this there. And I'm going to make this according to my convenience. You don't start decorating that hotel room as if you're going to live there forever. You know you have to check out of that hotel room. So you treat it as temporary, correct? Likewise, as Yudhishthir Maharaj said, when uh, uh, Yaksha had asked him, what is the biggest surprise of human life? He said, it's that we think we are going to live forever. In India, it is so much that even, you know, reputable uh, families like Ambani did not make a will because people have this thing that, oh, don't talk about death. But death is certain. So why are we worried? We know it is going to happen. So why are we worried? People are fearful about writing a will because they feel that, oh, if I write a will, then I'm you know, planning to die. Guess what? That's going to come one way or the other. You cannot escape it. It is such a reality of life that we know, the, as they say, nothing is more certain than death and taxes. Of course, that is a very Western term, but Death is certain. And we know we have to leave. Now, in what state we leave is the most important thing. If we leave in a state where we have performed and executed our duty sincerely, then we can go back to Godhead. But if we don't, you're going to keep coming back in this circle. It's like that student. And it doesn't happen here in the US, but in India, you know, if you did not get a certain percentage, you would not get promoted to the next class. You had to say, repeat that class, okay? Uh, so it's almost like we have to repeat that class and, you know, but when we repeat that class, we come as a whole different person again. And we don't know what karmic actions we're going to carry into that next life. So repeating the class is, is not recommended. It's not recommended in the material world and it is not recommended in the spiritual world. So a couple of important references, I'm just gonna keep track of time. Okay, this should be quick. There's a couple of important references in Srimad Bhagavatam, which I wanted to share. So in uh, Canto 4, verse uh, chapter 21, verse 34, it says, a tinge of bhakti purifies the material nature of the performances by which devotional service gradually, gradually comes to the transcendental position. One thing important to understand is this is a journey. You don't go from, you know, uh, you don't go from the first gear to the fourth gear right away. It is building. You are incrementally building. So gradually you come to that transcendental position. It is not magical. Therefore, although such yagyas are superficially material activities, they are actually transcendent. The results are transcendental. Somebody might tell you that, hey, this chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, how do you know this is transcendental? Because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us this is transcendental. Okay, It may seem to an ordinary person as a material activity, like singing a song. But it is not. We know the results are transcendental. Our acharyas have demonstrated those results are transcendental. 
Such yagyas as Surya Yagya, Indra Yagya, Chandra Yagya are performed in the names of the demigods. So you, you know that there are a lot of yagyas that are performed and they're talking about different types of yagyas here. But these demigods are bodily parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The demigods cannot accept sacrificial offerings for themselves, but they can accept them from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just as a department tax collector, so the IRS, okay, somebody in the IRS who's getting our check, he cannot take that check it is deposited for the government. So the tax collector of a government cannot collect tax for his personal account, but can realize them for the government. Likewise, no matter how many yagyas you do, ultimately it is not going to the different demigod, it is actually going to Krishna. So then why not just do the one yagya for this uh, age of Kali, which is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Any yagya performed with this complete knowledge and understanding is described in Bhagavad Gita as Brahmarpanam. So in this verse, this verse is referenced even in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when we are in complete knowledge and we perform yagya, it is Brahmarpanam or sacrifice offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Since no one but the Supreme Lord can enjoy the results of the sacrifice, he's actually the enjoyer of all sacrifices. This is, a, this is a, uh, one of my favorite verses. Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram. It was actually the first uh, lecture that I had ever given was on this verse. So that is why it's very dear to my heart. And it's also called the peace formula. Bhuktaram. Bhuktaram is the beneficiary. So all the yagyas that we perform, ultimately, Krishna is the beneficiary. Everything, Krishna is the actual enjoyer. And Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. So all sacrifices should be performed with this view in mind. So just repeating this, a person who is completely absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. The performer of the sacrifices must always keep in view that the sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas are meant to satisfy whom? The spiritual, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu Aradhya Te Panta. It's only for the satisfaction of Krishna. Anything material or spiritual done for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord is understood to be an actual yagya. And by performing such yagyas, one gets liberation from material bondage. So quickly, last, this last slide, we are summing up our learning from this chapter, from this verse. So text 424 tells us the perfect cure for a materially entangled soul. Krishna consciousness is the perfect cure. And for those who don't believe they need cure, then they are not self-aware that they have a disease. Our disease is we are in the illusory, we are trapped by the illusory energy. Activities of the material world, when performed in Krishna consciousness, become spiritualized by complete absorption. Krishna consciousness is the process of converting illusory consciousness into Brahman. Brahman means spiritual. The Lord is spiritual and the rays of his transcendental body are Brahma Jyoti. Everything is situated in that Brahma Jyoti. And when that Jyoti is covered by illusion or sense gratification, it becomes material. How to remove this material veil? Only one cure, Krishna consciousness. Offering for the sake of Krishna consciousness, the consuming agent, the process of consumption, the contributor, everything becomes Brahman. So when you do something in Krishna consciousness, it is all beyond the material 
energy. Then you transcend material energy. And that is what this chapter is telling us, transcendental knowledge. That means the knowledge that transcends us beyond the material state. Mind in Samadhi refers to mind fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Anything done in such transcendental consciousness is called yagya. And the yagya for this age of Kali is chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. All the components involved in sacrifice become one with the absolute. So while we are all Brahman as fragmental parts, for us to go back to the spiritual world, we have to move our mind. We have to get our mind fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. And that's when we will transcend and our yagya will be successful. So I'm going to pause here. I should say stop here, not pause. You take questions, Mataji? I will try, Prabhu. Oh, okay. Uh, devotees, uh, please ask questions to Mataji. So either it was very clear or it was not at all clear, one of the two. Hey, <laughs> Mataji, very nice class. Uh, um, your favorite verse is also my one of my favorite words. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, I didn't have any questions, but just uh, one drop class. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna. I, don't, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to say the class was wonderful. And all the realizations were really very relatable. Thank you for the wonderful class, Mataji. Thank you. And they were not, they, they were less of my realizations and everything coming from Srila Prabhupada. So it naturally becomes spiritual then. Hare Krishna Mataji. Very nice class. I had a question in the lecture. So in the on the second to last uh, slide, you had that. Whatever is involved uh, in Krishna consciousness that is becoming, it's getting purified, it's be becoming part of Brahma. Um, so when people are performing Krishna conscious activities, you know, uh, or we are trying to be, we are still not completely purified. You know, we still suffer with the problems of our ego coming in or, you know, um, as so many times that Sar Prabhu has said, someone says something to it, you know, if you're not recognized, you feel hurt. So how is, how is still that becoming part of uh, uh, the Brahma? Like, how is it still getting uh, purified when all these problems still exist in, in this whole thing? That's a very good question, Mataji. Um, I'm going to attempt to answer uh, to the best of my ability and I will ask Satisar Prabhu to also jump in. The way I see it is yes. Ultimately, we are, you know, we are in the illusory energy. Okay. So all our uh, defects, okay, are still going to show up. It is not until we get to that perfect state that we are able to leave all those defects behind and transcend. So then the question is, hey, I'm doing all this. If I don't uh, you know, get to that perfect state, then I still have to, I'm still going to come back in the form of uh, the, you know, being trapped she by illusory energy. The way, the way I have heard uh, Srila Prabhupada's lectures or Niranta Prabhu's lectures are keep doing what you're doing because Krishna is so merciful that sometimes, you know, he will see your effort. He will see your effort and he will reward you for the effort versus the result of that effort. So never give up that effort. That sincere effort will take you across the line versus, you know, did I get all the answers right? But I'm going to uh, ask Satisar Prabhu to give a more uh, a spiritual um, uh, answer to this. No, a beautiful answer, Mataji. Yes. I just, maybe I can add a couple of thoughts. Uh, if um, So let's talk about the conflict between the devotees while practicing bhakti. Hmm? So Rupa Goswami very clearly gave us 
the nine uh, what do you say stages of bhakti right starts with faith ado shraddha sadhu sangha bhajana kriya then comes anartha nivritti then you transcend to nishta ruchi ashakti bhava and of course finally prem krishna prema isn't it so the conflict arises because of the anarthas that we have in our heart okay so everyone will have some anarthas so there will be a conflict according to the level of a degree of anarthas we have if a person a devotee practices bhakti properly what does it mean uh, chanting hari krishna mama mantra 16 rounds minimum uh, without offenses or trying in a nama bash stage trying our best to chant without offenses sincerely following regular principles and work under the spiritual master or representative of spiritual master with the proper association then anartha nivritti takes place the unwanted things started to go down from our heart so then what happens if we come to stage of nishta i was talking about it in bhakti shastra yesterday in nishta stage in the beginning of nishta is anarthas will be there but they are under control put it other way around they do not disturb our bhakti so the conflict arises because they they are not in nishta stage yet even in nishta you have full control over anartha so anartha won't disturb your bhakti anymore so in the stage of anartha nivritti bhajana kriya so you get initiated you get you know mantra and started to chant anartha is still there because it comes out and it disturbs our bhakti so we cannot chant properly we get disturbed by small things right so then we have this kind of a reservation this person is like that that person is like that so all this mentality those things are like disturbing our bhakti so in the nishta stage anathas reduced to the minimal level but still they are there but they don't disturb us anymore so then we transcend and go to ashakti and things like that okay mata ji so so we all are in anartha nivritti stage so the anathas will disturb our bhakti practice actually so that's where we need to sincerely work under authority is very important thank you prabhu beautiful answer thank you mata ji for the wonderful lecture it was very nice to hear that thank you uh prabhu and uh, mata ji i have a quick question um this is about uh, uh, karma uh, so uh, i think we discussed that some uh, in a class or a couple of classes uh, before but uh, uh, let me ask again um i think some other uh, uh, prabhu asked that question at the, um so my my question is uh, we have uh, we have good karma and bad karma we do some activities and we get either a good karma or bad karma out of that um so even if you have a good karma we will have to take birth again and then uh, use up all that good karma or or like how do we um how do we do activities where we don't accumulate any karma or, or if you can enlighten me on that on how that works that, that'll be great Thank sure you. i'll take my first uh, stab at this and satyesh or prabhu will jump in so that is where action in krishna consciousness comes when we act in krishna consciousness and keeping krishna as the beneficiary the offering everything to krishna we that karma then becomes uh, free from reaction so that is absolutely true you, people who do a lot of charity and a lot of good karma they are also they also are in the material bondage because they have to then come back to really to you know uh, get the uh, benefit of that good karma and bad karma uh, similarly Uh, suffering for the bad karma but when you act in krishna consciousness when you do everything as a uh, uh, keeping krishna that krishna i'm doing this for you i'm doing my best a student krishna i'm studying i for my exams i'm doing my best but uh, it is i'm doing this for you so whatever the result is i will accept it similarly somebody who's at a job you know you say krishna i'm doing my best i don't know what you know whether i'll get a promotion or not but whatever i'm doing i'm doing it as a sincere effort and i'm offering it to you the moment we start offering everything to krishna we become free from 
why do we offer food so that all the food that we eat you know it becomes purified so everything that we offer to krishna then makes us free from the reaction from that that is our prabhu do you want to jump in so i think that's a wonderful answer i think you summed it up very well but i just uh, prabhu i think you are referring to the karma yoga class uh, yes prabhu yeah 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 so yesterday we talked about the uh, text 30 from third chapter is a beautiful verse mayi sarvani karmani mm-hmm. so basically krishna talks about uh, the he gives us the summary of karma yoga in that verse i was talking about it acharyas call it as karma arpanam verse meaning you offer all activities to krishna while being fixed in atma meaning while being fixed in the realization that i am not this body i am spirit soul so all act but you offer the activities to krishna so all activities means all the activities that support our body that are favorable for offering to the lord should be offered to the lord so that's what is a very important point so this is i i i said is the third type of karma yoga so what are the three types so, sorry prabhu could you come again please I, i i didn't quite catch it no no what i was telling is in, in text 30 of third chapter krishna talks about mai sarvani karmani mai is first using his word mai mai means me directly offer everything to me before this verse he has been talking about sakama karma yoga he was talking about nishkama karma yoga now he is saying that this, this is called karma arpanam he says that arjuna not only nishkama karma yoga you just offer it to me so let me give a difference of these things right so i call it as a third type of karma yoga so first type is sakama karma yoga means you follow karma yoga what is karma yoga do your duties like a mother father student whatever you are role you play in your life in the society or in the family do your duties with the goal of enjoying the results mental enjoyment you work go to work get money i enjoy it okay little bit i want to give it to devatas i do some temple service a little bit very very small proportion but the goal is to enjoy it nishkama karma yoga means you follow karma yoga the principles of karma yoga but without attachment to enjoying the results the goal being to make advancement i am not this body i am spirit soul that is called atma so that is nishkama karma yoga so krishna was advising to arjuna in the nishkama karma yoga stage you don't incur any karma at all both good and bad makes sense to you so that's how you come out of this repeated cycle of birth and death so that is nishkama karma yoga but krishna is telling arjuna that you have to transcend from nishkama karma yoga to this karma arpanam meaning here it is not sacrifice such as yagna like fire sacrifice which is indirectly offering things to vishnu here we offer the activities to krishna without desire for results that is this verse mataji just talked about 424 without desire for results and without possessiveness hmm, you offer directly to krishna so this is superior to nishkama karma yoga as it has more direct link to the supreme lord makes sense to you prabhu yes yes, yes prabhu you are not only burning your bad karma or you are not accumulating good karma to enjoy coming back here but you are also developing a relationship with the lord so you go to the lord and have a relationship but if you do only nishkama karma yoga okay nishkama karma yoga also burns your karma and you are not accumulating any karma at all what is the difference between nishkama karma yoga and this karma arpanam the difference is nishkama karma yoga you get impersonal liberation you be, be out of this material world but where are you going to be you will be in brahma jyoti that is why krishna is telling arjuna that arjuna not only nishkama karma yoga is much better than sakama but do, please don't stop there you go to karma arpanam just do it for me for my pleasure then it becomes bridge to bhakti yoga got it got it that way you are you develop a relationship with the lord and you go to yad gadvan yad gadvan yad gadvantanivartante taddama paramam mama you go to his is dam and you have a relationship with him and you have a spiritual um happiness that that's how we should understand prabhu 
thank you prabhu thank you madha ji for uh, explanation both of you uh, helped me understand this I appreciate it mm, thank you madha ji for the nice lecture uh, prabhu the following to that answer so uh, so karma arpanam is easier than nishkama karma yoga right prabhu like in that way because we cannot <laughs> well it, it it depends on the person mm. right um because th- there is a you are right for devotees it is much easier for us because hey, i need to do as my mother um, as a mother i have to do my duties as a father i have to do my duties as an employee i have to do my duties but i'm going to do it for krishna i'm going to keep krishna in my mind so it's for devotees it is very easy because we recognize the supreme lord mm people who don't recognize the supreme lord they don't accept the supreme lord krishna as the supreme lord what would they do they see devanam parama vishnu they see vishnu has uh, one of the devas they're not seeing them seeing him as a supreme lord so they do nishkama karma yoga like i am offering to devatas instead i am offering to vishnu indirectly mm-hmm. but my goal is to realize the atma i am not this body mm So they are attracted to the impersonal aspect like in this verse is talking about brahman you know so the the brahman when it is realized at the platform of the soul then it becomes impersonal only the param brahman is the person so that devotees have that person so this is karma arpanam is for the devotees who recognize the supreme lord as a person so that's what krishna says mayi there is no more clarity you, you can get mayi means me me means a person offer it to me or do it for my satisfaction so that that's how prabhu thank you thank you prabhu hmm? thank you mataji once again nice class so so prabhu uh, can i have a follow up question on this uh, real quick uh, so what do we do with the good uh, so let's say we do a, a, a like karma arpanam and then uh, we offer everything to krishna then we get something in return right like for example like what we had in nishkama karma we we enjoy the I mean, like there's a um, activity I mean, something out of that activity we get in return what do we do with that prabhu what do you do with the result yeah it it is a it's a prashadam prashadam means govinda so you consume the prashadam with the consciousness of the supreme lord so it just purifies our existence for example so that is the idea of offering to krishna and eating prashadam right prabhu so when you offer krishna doesn't have to eat anything but it is mercy he comes as a devotee archa vigraha he makes that offering spiritual that is this words actually isn't it when you offer it to krishna it becomes prashad what do you do with the prashad we consume it thereby our existence gets purified all our anathas goes away from our heart like ratika mata ji's question that is how we get purified by consuming the result of the offering and we come to the stage where we advance and we come to the stage of bhakti then we just do the activities that are already offered to the lord we are just doing them for the lord so intrinsically the activity of those activities are for the lord by its very nature what are those activities pralad is saying shravanam kirtanam um, vishnu smaranam pada sevanam all these things so then we come to the point where our obligations are over our purification we had enough purification then we naturally come to the point saying that i completed all my obligations you take on a prastha you practice bhakti yoga fully those activities intrinsically by nature they are offered to the lord and we do that activities just to give pleasure to the lord the goal and the concept of those activities are to please the lord that's the difference between bhakti yogi and this karma arpanam devotee you, you transcend so by consuming that offering we get our existence purified then we come to the the real bhakti yoga god prabhu i think karma arpanam is much much better than uh, nishkama karma yoga i think that's what uh, prabhu who spoke to me before also indicated so yeah, right. i i now right. understand his thought process too yeah. right 
Krishna is amazing and Prabhupada writes a brilliant purport actually for us to understand all these things, otherwise we'll be lost. All glories to Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhu, one more small reflection I want to share, like it's struck my mind. So like in the Western world or the modern, when we take anything, we will say once I take, then we'll say thank to others. But in the spirituality, in a, wherever, uh, we will give them like anything to Brahmanas and all, and we'll take blessings. <laughs> Instead of their thanking us, and we are thanking them like. Uh, uh, any point, Prabhu, on that? Like you want to? Add? Uh, no, I mean you. Uh, you, uh, you shared a fantastic point, actually, Prabhu. Yeah. <laughs> that that is the Vedic culture. America. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Um, the class was wonderful. Um, I have one um, question. Um, where my mind uh, often debates um, if um, get uh, for us if we are fully absorbed in um, bhakti yoga, thinking about God, and then um, when we drive or go anywhere, we see lots of people suffering. Maybe during snowstorm or otherwise, uh, then minds start to debate if um, if bhakti yoga practicing bhakti yoga is that superior or um, seeing um, um, super soul in every living entity and servicing for them is superior um, i mean it, not just human any living entity so that constantly there is a debate comes in how do you handle those kinds of things I'll just share what I uh, have learned on this. Uh, so most of us come from, uh, you know, this whole uh, culture where it's always questioned that, you know, you're spending this money on temple, the same money. I, I have so many friends and family who will say that the same money you can give to somebody poor or get somebody's education and that'll be so much better. So the way to look at this is, is that, and this is, again, I've heard this in uh, so many lectures is, yes, you can, there's no doubt. I mean, if you look at ISKCON service, they have hospitals, they have un, uh, <clears throat> the um, lunchtime programs. They have a lot of the uh, programs that are going to benefit the basic needs of human society but that is not their sole purpose. The, the primary purpose of our movement is you are, you're not trying to solve a problem for a day or a month or a year or just this lifetime. The primary purpose of our mission is that you are trying to solve the problem that will get people out of this Dukhale Ashashvatam, that is what this uh, planet Earth is. Dukhale, there's always going to be a misery and sorrow. Ashashvatam, it's always changing. So how do we enable the entrapped soul to come out of this? So that problem, we're looking at a more long-term solve for the problem versus a short-term solve. I mean, an example is allopathy typically treats your symptoms, okay? So you get immediate relief from symptoms, but it doesn't treat the problem at its root, okay? And unless you treat a problem at the root level, it keeps coming back. <clears throat> One time I went to the doctor and I said, why isn't this problem going away? I mean, why, is it, why am I not getting cured? And they said, the disease, we can only do disease management. We cannot do disease cure. A disease doesn't get cured in, in the uh, you know, modern uh, medical um, <clears throat> science. <clears throat> they manage a disease. But when you look at Ayurveda and you know, what our 
uh, they are looking at killing the disease at the root. Likewise, what we are doing as part of temple, bhakti yoga, preaching, preaching is the most important, hearing, chanting, preaching is the most important part of our movement. Because what we are doing is we are trying to address the basic problem at the root versus treating the symptoms. Because you treat the symptoms, the disease is still there. But you treat, you cure the disease, and this verse is that cure for the disease, then you will come out of this. So that is why, yes, you're right. It, there's always one, one part of us that says, you know, why don't I feed people who are hungry or give blankets and, you know, the winter storm came. There's nothing wrong in doing that. But your ultimate purpose and your ultimate goal has to be to treat the disease of the soul and not, you know, just take care of some symptoms that you're seeing temporarily. Thank you, Mataji. That's a that's a great answer. Yeah. It looks like there are no other questions. If that is the case, we'll do a nice thank you note. Rasamay Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you very much for this wonderful enlightenment. Um, you perfectly told the cure for this material entanglement. Krishna consciousness is a perfect cure for this material entanglement and Brahma Arpanam. So whatever we sacrifice in this Ajna, if we think that whatever we are doing, it is as an offering to Lord, the fire and the person who, are, who is offering that is also belongs to Krishna. And I also like the point, like Krishna sees what we keep than what we give. And um, so we are all the fragments of Krishna, even like, even though we are fragments of Krishna, Krishna never becomes less as in the material world, one minus one is zero, but in the spiritual world, one minus one is not zero, still one. Um, and for this Kali Yuga, the best sacrifice is chanting the holy name of the Lord and um, because it has freely available, we should not um, make it less. We should best make use of this sacrifice, the Sankirtan Yajna. And other important point which I liked is that we should see God through ears. So hearing is the first step in our any spiritual in, uh, process. And in this Krishna consciousness, either we, may, we go forward or backward but not in the stagnant position. So we should always make our attempts to forward to uh, in the spiritual um, platform. So these are the important points I liked in your class. Thank you very much. Looking forward for more classes. Thank there you. will be a lot of takeaways in your class in a simple way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. With that, uh, we'll make a quick announcements. Then um, Sri Devi Mataji, Sri Devi Kanan Mataji is going to sing Narsing Arati. Over to you, Radha Ramata Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Ramaji. Um, so uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, first of all, we have uh, two birthdays this week. Uh, we have a birthday of uh, Umesh Prabhu uh, and Ananya. Uh, Ananya is Purna Masimadaji and Sunil Prabhu's daughter. And uh, let us uh, chant Hare Krishna Mahamandra three times for the benefit of both of them. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you. Um, and then we have an, another important announcement, which is uh, about Gora Purnima. We're going to uh, uh, our Gora Purnima uh, festival, which is uh, uh, appearance day of uh, Sri Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's going to be on March 28th, uh, Sunday. And uh, uh, you must have seen uh, messages from Sri Devi Madhaji's uh, 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 and Kannan Prabhu uh, uh, inviting for various program participation. 
so uh, please uh, uh, please um, you know uh, join the programs and uh, make this program a wonderful program also um, you can also check with uh, neha madaji and asmai madaji if you are, they are the leads of this programs so um, if you have any questions please talk to them and uh, there are wonderful programs out there so please take full benefit of it hare krishna that's all the announcement we had for this week uh, we all see you next week too um, over to you sir sir thank you prabhu uh, shridhar mata ji hare krishna prabhu <clears throat> namaste narasimhaya ప్రహ్లాతలాతాయే హిరణ్యకాశీపూర్వక్షీలతనకాలయో పారతో నో యోయామి కో నో బీ ృతృంగ కేశవదృతా నరహరిప జయ జగదీశ హరే జయ జగదీశ హరే జయ జగదీశ హరే తవ కర కమళ వరే thank you very much mata ji for nice um, singing so with that we'll conclude our sunday face program here thank you all for joining see you all next week have a wonderful krishna conscious week hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna prabhu hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna prabhu hari krishna prabhu hari krishna